Mr. Rayburn, are you with us? I'm with you. C.J. Rayburn has joined us on In the Dirt. How are you this evening, sir? Just fine. Just uh, just just come in out of the shop here to listen in on this deal. Well, we certainly appreciate you taking time out of your evening. So what's going out in that shop? Uh, uh, a lot, I'm, I'm, I'm assuming. No, we're very, very slow. Uh, doing a lot of research and, you know, filling up the dumpster. You go make it, you don't like it, you throw it away. But uh, uh, we've really been on to something here in the last few weeks. And... I think, in, and it's definitely swing arm. I've went through everything, and uh, there's nothing. Uh, a swing arm is more independent than anything back there. And, but uh, I don't know. People don't like to hear the word swing arm. So, but I'm building the best car I know how. Now, well, when was the when was the very very first time that you um, built a car, year wise? Uh, well. I built some. I built some in '77 and '78, and I guess they were prototypes, and they were real successful. So we were in uh, Bull Scout, wrecked real bad. Tore the fence down. I mean, tore this thing all to pieces. It broke all the components on the car, but it didn't hurt the car. And at that time, everybody said, "Well, that little skimpy, skimply car, it ain't gonna. It's a, it's just a throwaway." But you know, we said that, and I said, "You know, they've always said this. Why don't we just build cars?" And that was in the fall of '79. And then we built Leaf cars. Oh, uh, we built Leaf cars for about three years. Then uh, UMP went to the small cars. And we didn't know a whole lot about a leaf. We didn't know a lot about racing at that time. And uh, we went, when we went to little cars, you know, they, the cars was real loose going in the corner. We didn't know what to do. I didn't have enough brains to put a brake floater on it. So we made four-bar brackets with the brake floaters on it. And that's when the four-bar come. By. And this car was designed around a watch linkage, which is what a swing arm is. And But anyway, we rolled it out of the shop before it was finished. We had just flipped that bar from the tail to the front to just to see what it was doing. We run out of time, went to the races, and my God, they were such fast, just fast, fast. 85 late 84 come out with a new car that was similar to it only it was a watch linkage people were so proud of their four bars I couldn't get them out of them I'd get them in one of these cars they'd run a lot better they'd go right back to their four bar stuff and 86 we come up with cantilever uh, Dick Dick Anderson from Career Shocks, he designed the back end. Uh, can't think of a name. IndyCar. Uh, oh, my God, the Chinese. He's real famous, built a lot of cars. Uh, I'll think of his name in a minute. He designed the front end or helped me design it. And uh, this was a real good car. Not consistent. Uh you know, it had no magic in it. It was just a plain old car that would go around the racetrack real good. And then we come out with the the swing arm was actually made off of the cantilever, and it was just where we turned it. We took the shock off the cantilever and put it up and put it on the car. And my gosh, was that a car that was in that was in '89. And I believe Kevin Weaver got the first one of those. And, uh, my God, they were just, they done everything that a race car is supposed to do. Come back, uh, well, you know, uh, if he was around, 
if you was around that uh, uh, 15 years from about 89 to 90 or 2004, you know, you knew, you know, what we had done. And in 2004, we come out with our, or 2003 late, we come out with our 2004 car. And that car today is superior to anything I've ever seen. We don't win races, we know. We don't have a racing program, but we call that the the 104 series. The 103 series was a plain over rail, like you know, like most of people's got. Now, he was talking about Bruce at Bloomquist. Bruce, I think, worked for me all them years. I know he did, maybe around 14 years or something. And he is a good fabricator. He had said that. Good boy. Now, the the the, the question I have is, o- over the years, um, these cars have uh, metamorphosed. You know, they morphed into this and that and, and the swing arm, the four bar, the combos and all that stuff. In your opinion, uh, have, the, ha- have, have builders overthought this thing? I mean, are, and I, and I'm just Oh, asking. I don't think... Uh... I don't think that they put a lot of basic thoughts in anything. They know how they run last week. They think what to do to run a little bit better this week and, you know, a little bit more, and then the next guy does that. And and it's got it's amazing what those guys know about four-bar cars. And, uh, the, and the four-bar is really a simple car for me. I mean... It's just as simple as anything else. It just don't do everything that it needs to do, and it needs to be what it was designed to be. And with that, with that being said, how much of today's late model uh, racing is uh, monkey see, monkey do, and not necessarily what? Oh, it's nobody, nobody thinks for themselves. Everybody does what everybody does, so that's where all that's. I don't. I don't know, CJ. I'm gonna have to disagree with you. Yeah. This is Brian Gray, CJ. Brian How's Gray. it going, sir? Good. Yeah, you Come know, on, I, I gotta hear it. Come on, I gotta hear it. <laughs> I gotta hear it. <laughs> yeah, I, I know what you're saying about that, and I run into this stuff a lot. You know, I. Regardless of of the common you know thought of what some people think they know, I get a lot of calls from a lot of people, on I mean every week, and and you're right, a lot of people do it. It's, it's I don't uh, know. this guy has this guy has this stuff, so I have to have it, and, right. and they're and they're buying this part and they're buying that That's part, right. and then they go out to the racetrack and they're not getting any faster, and they're asking themselves why. Uh, they're not thinking for themselves. Now you're going to take, you know, some of the guys like Moyer and Bloomquist, Bab and Jimmy J O, and a lot of those guys. They run good in a damn water truck. With all the plug wires are on it. And uh, but I think uh, I think if you got down to him, the only guy I've ever seen that's got in a car and run better and, and got to have a swing arm. And run better. Moyer did, but Moyer never fooled with the swing arm. He had his mind on four bar, and 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 this is another thing. Back in the day, I had I give Moyer. In fact, actually, I give it to the guy that built his car. I give him a chassis, didn't paint it, and give him all the four, the four bar components. So they could come out and and keep up with me because we're rocking the world with these things, and at that time's what people wanted, and uh, you know we just gave it to them, no charge. You know, I wanted to help them. I wanted to keep all of it even. And if you think GM don't help Ford and Ford don't help Chrysler, you know it happens that way, and it's got to be that way. I got another a question. Now we we're down south here, uh, or I am anyway, down in Alabama. Down here we got a lot of slick racetracks, and yeah. sometimes they, some uh, and and this is just conversation. Uh, when I say this, uh, a lot of people say the Rayburns don't work on 
the slick, and how how can they work on the slick? Is my question. How can they? Yes. I mean, I'm just asking. I don't know either way. These new cars that we got out, the prototypes, should ask those guys how they work on slick gray tracks. You know, you know, it's it's very simple. Uh, a slick, you know. Now, now here again, I don't have Scott Bloomquist in my car. Uh, I have had him in there. He had done very, very well. Uh, I've had, I've had all those guys in my car. They've all been very, very successful at them. But they go back and uh, uh, they'll go and say, "Man, I just ain't got no forward bite." And this other guy will say, "I ain't got no forward bite." Well, now we've got 20 cars out of the 24 field in it. And all of them get to claim, I don't have any forward bite. I don't have any side bite. And maybe at a time then we were a little shy. Side bite the simplest thing in the world. And you can get some of it with a panter bar, you know, or the J bar. You can get some of it with that. But it's not because this thing is sticking up on the frame and burying the rear end in the ground. That's not exactly all they are about it. When you accept, you got your shocks leaned in, when you let off that throttle, the rear end shifts to the left. It stiffens the right front or right rear spring. That tight jib going in and gives you side bite. It does it on the four bar, and and believe me, I have seen, I have learned a lot from the people with the four bar to see problems that I had with that, and probably at one time I did have that. Uh, I see people would get out of a car, one of theirs, maybe get in a four bar and run good for one race, and then they come back and and they know that they are fast. They just know that they're fast because these fast guys has got one of those cars. And uh, we'll go over and, uh, I mean, you can see the guy that runs second in the summer national, you know, he just wasn't as good in that. Uh, in the swing arms. Now, if you just go look how we dominated, and we didn't have motors five years ago like they got now. They got that spreadboard stuff and tracks. For some reason, they they're just heavy and fast all the time. I guess they got chemicals put in it. Uh, uh, talking about okay, moving to that in that direction. What? What do you think of the sport today, CJ? I mean, what are what are the things that you see that are uh, hurting or helping the sport? Well, you know, uh, they are. I'm believing that there they used to be about fourteen thousand super late models in in the U.S. Now I'm thinking it's down to about ten or eleven thousand, somewhere in that range, and that's an, just an educated guess. There is 200 or maybe 300 of these people that can afford to go race. There's 10,700 people that's Joe average racing. They can't afford the motors. Uh, the sanctioning bodies won't let you come through and come up with the best, you know, that uh, Nazra deal is the best thing that ever happened to racing. Got an email from somebody some days that CJ, I think this is the best thing that ever happened. But money, the people with the money will shut it down. I go to a local racetrack, uh, and now, now we got Victor Lee, runs swing arm, runs right on the program just about all the time, runs like it's supposed to be, he reads a book and or the setup sheet and does it. We got a motor in that car. We got a set of five twenty. Or, you know, we bought a. We had a seventy-two hundred dollar motor from GM. We got a hundred or maybe two hundred pound weight break with that car. Well, the little race tracks, it would dominate. So here's the rich guys that maybe brings more people to the racetrack. They go bitch at the promoters and the sanctioning bodies. And now they throw this thing out. Uh, we got these cars. That we got uh, modifieds up north in the USMTS or whatever it is. And they got these motors in there. And these kids are just 
dominating. This Brandon Davis is just dominating. Well, they all hate me for it. <laughs> but anyway, we got one of these motors. We blew it up. Don't have the money to to buy a new motor. And I I'm absolutely engineer low cost racing. You got to be the best, but you got to do it low cost. You waste not, you want not. But anyway, they had this blowed up. Nobody had any money to spend on, so we went to the junkyard and bought a truck motor. One of these. It's a, a, a six-liter Chevrolet truck, you know, about from 2000 to 3 up. This motor had been in a flood, and the oil pan was over half full of mud in it. We took the thing out and took the guts out of this 525, the heads and everything off of it. Bought a high-dollar oil pan from it. It was about $400. That's high-dollar for a, a, a Joe Average racer. Not for the rich guys, but it's high-dollar for a Joe Average racer. And put in this car, well, he's supposed to get a 200-pound weight break with it. You know, it's less than 700 horsepower, so, you know, we was getting this 100-pound weight break. Well, here are the rich guys. Now, we're talking about Ponderosa, Kentucky. Here the rich guys come along, and they complain to the promoter. Now the promoter makes him weigh 2,300 pounds, just like the guys that's got the 850 horsepower motors. This guy's sitting here with less than 700 horsepower. Well, he's still beating them. And, you know, that's, that's where it's at right now. And I've always tried to build steel motors for the local people if they can get a weight break. You know, now they can go run good. But it's hard to take a Joe Average racer, and that's what we got 10,700 of, and go out run these elite 300 people. So that and, and, you know, as far as knowing chassis, you know, I'll sit in chassis with anybody. I know as much about it as anybody, and I think just to blow a little smoke, uh, I'm where I come from, and people don't realize that they forgot that. And you're talking now, about all this, all this money. Now, now so who was it? Uh, Gray was talking about. Ooh, it was kind of insinuating that a four bar was better on a slick racetrack. No, I wasn't insinuating that. You were just okay. saying that there's a lot okay. of people but, out there that just follow, that follow each other, and I just feel like I'm one of other. I'm one of those guys. I think that I tend to to try as many different things as possible. Um, well, I've never had you know you know CJ. I've I've always all the cars that I've ever got was cars that somebody had flipped over, torn apart, cut them up, bent them up. And I got a pretty nice little welder and a tube bender, and I know how to fabricate a little bit. And I've been, you know, I've been around this stuff my whole life. Um, and I, and I just put, I take everybody else's crap, and I put it together the way I think it should go. And I think but, we've done we've done pretty good, pretty okay. good with it. So evidently, you're on swing arm then. Well, I've never had a car that <laughs> I've never seen. True I've still? never I've seen John Sizemore's. Uh, John Sizemore, I think, had a an Intimidator car, and it had that swing arm set up on it. And everybody said, "Well, this is just this is all C.J. Rayburn stuff," and and that was as who, close hey, to a swing arm as who, I'd ever seen. But I'd never who, driven one. Whose car is not close to C.J. Rayburn? Go look at everybody's car today, then go back look in the eighties. I've been begging Gary Engel to give me a shot at driving his car. Well. If you think you can drive, you better get in it because we just put it on swing arm. And by God, they said it was fast Saturday night. Well, they had they had John Holt in it, and nothing against John Holt. Um, but John no. Holt, I think, was good back well, years ago. He's like, just, he's like me. He's over the he's over the he's over the hill. I'm not saying that. You're saying that. <laughs> well, yeah, I'm plain spoken. <laughs> yeah. What happened to him Saturday night? Engel. Motor quit riding. Motor quit riding. But I watched uh, I watched know. Dwayne winning it at Moeller. Dwayne Chamberlain yeah, but that real well. Wasn't, that car wasn't good. I mean it was just like everybody else's car. And but I know I mean, Florence Speedway against, I know yeah. Florence Speedway pretty well. 
and and I've done really well in what I've had and, and what I've had to work with. I'm, it's it's not the worst in the world, but it's not the best. And I run all steel engines, and I know the difference between having an aluminum motor on the front of the car and having a big old steel it motor does, on the front uh, of the car. It, it does hurt. It slows the car down. But if a guy's got a light car, he can make up for it. And uh, it just puts a pendulum effect on both ends of the car, and, you know, it's not good, and the guy really needs a weight break. Well, if he don't, and, and you know, a sanctioned body, they shouldn't even check a setback on a steel motor. Let them set the thing back there, and then they can be as good as a lunar motor. Now you got a poor guy comes along. They don't sell many tickets at the front gate, but this poor guy comes along with a car he don't have much money in and beats him guys. Now, I tell you, at Florence, I've run real good at Florence. I mean, if you was around, you had to have a right car. I was, I was there. there the I was there the night that you won your first feature at Florence. Yeah, I remember and, that. Uh, yeah, but I, uh, but today the place is just a thorn in my side. I don't know. <laughs> you know, I don't go there enough to 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 master the racetrack, and I don't have people that goes there, so I can't do that. Uh, great people, good racetrack. It's just something that, uh, you know, that we just can't do. But I'd certainly put your name in the hat. I'd see, I'd find out about you and see if you can drive a race car, and I'll put you right in Gary's car because we need people to go out and show this new stuff off. And well, right I know I got Gary on it. I, I think that I, I I think that I can drive, and I'm not the only one that thinks that. I mean, there's a lot of people out there. You all you have to do is ask around. Most people know who I am or have seen me race. Well, you know, <clears throat> I never was a, a race car driver, and I knew I never was a race car driver because I was 43 years old before I got in one. That's when you should be retiring, and uh, but I beat people with cars. And then when I could win with a car, people would buy them. Today, I can't get in a car and win them, and people don't buy the cars. So, CJ, you're you're saying that at, I'm third. I'm thirty. This is Webb again. I'm thirty eight years old. There's still time. I can be a driver at some point. No, you're too damn old. <laughs> <laughs> unless, unless you, don't Webb, know, un, hey, unless you, don't you can get, engineer hey, you don't a car that part. will be fast for you. <laughs> oh man. Now, see, you know, I do, uh, I we do are lacking for drivers. We are. I mean, uh, just like this elite two, three hundred out there, they race all the time and race and race and race, and they are just good drivers. When they come in your backyard, they're going to outrun you, unless we can come up. And I believe we. I know that I've had this for years. I just need people with confidence. But. Really, uh, what we've done on the car, we put more roll steer in it, and uh, you know, probably right at this point, we got too much, but that's good. You know, you got to go over and come back. We've got a ladder. We've got what's happening when we roll steer the car and lift it up to get the left side up in the wind. The pull bar quits working. Got real good initial bite. The pull bar quits working. And we didn't notice this till uh, almost a year ago, late last fall. We noticed it, and uh, so now we've got this bar. It hooks to the bottom of the rear end on a monoball, and then it's got the pull bar hooked to that. This thing goes up beside the driver's, you know, between the driver and the drive shaft, and it's got a little square box that this thing sits in and uh, rattles a little bit and uh, and this thing is it just it drives the rear wheels in the ground i mean it drives them in there so now we got to put go over to the right side and put more drive in it to keep the left front down and see that's what i've always told it asked everybody about all i need is a car that'll go forward on the gas i'll make it go through the corner i just need you to go forward on the gas well, when we take left rear out of the car, 
you'll go in the corner tighter. You'll have more side bite. So that's simple there. And, uh, and you know, front ends, God, they, everybody's got a good front end right now. That, and they should have because I know where it all comes from. Oh, well. I wanted to ask you a question. Uh, Grant CJ. King. Grant King is the guy that built Indy cars. Grant King. He, yeah, he's the guy that helped us do the front end. I've done engine work for him. He'd run 500 cars. and we done engine work, and he'd done this. And... Uh, and then later on, all the asphalt cars went to this front end. The the question I I want to get get to is this: uh, and you talked about the two or three hundred guys that race uh, for a living, good drivers, have the money to yeah. do it, and all that. What do you think when you when there is a when there is a five twenty five available and the, and the, and the six hundred two and six hundred fours available to run? What do you think when you hear drivers and teams talk about? The tracks need to pay more money because the guys are buying all this expensive crap. Do they do they need it to race with what's available out there? Well, well, you know the economy and the race tracks that runs every Saturday night depend on the blue collar people. The blue collar people is who I depend on, and that's what the economy's hit real bad. You know, the blue collar people would have this little company sponsor them a little bit. Now this little company can't do them. Uh, they have to concessions on their pay at work a lot of times, and they can't afford this. And, and believe me, I do everything in the world to help a customer financially. You know, they always said, if you don't have money, go to Rayburn. Well, uh, well, I guess they, I guess what I was always, getting, pardon. I guess what I was getting at is is why on earth would teams spend the money that they do when the purses are what they are and Whoa, you don't have to win. Because yeah. they want to win, Webb. Well, that, you uh, can, the, the, the financial, if I look at them, I mean, I mean, all of those guys that run up and down the road are my heroes. And I've been acquainted and associated with every, about every one of them. And love them like one of my kids. But from a financial standpoint, they sure don't impress me. <laughs> if they go spend a million dollars a year and take in five hundred thousand, uh, they're not impressing me any. Well, that's what I'm getting at. I, I just don't uh, get. But I can take uh, I can take Calvin Canada, and I guess y'all know Calvin. He races. He stays within his means. He runs up in the top, wins a lot. I think leads the points and won the points deal and everything. And when Calvin builds a motor. It's on a budget. He don't. He uses common sense, and he don't buy all the big stuff, which you don't need to run around here. But they do. <clears throat> Everybody bitches about the promoter making money, and like I say, the blue collar people is what keeps a weekly track going. And and you know that they, they should run uh, the the six oh two six oh four crate motors. And this CT525, seal them motors up and put somebody on them with common sense, and they can't cheat them up. They couldn't cheat me. If I was inspecting them motors, hell, I can smell them and tell whether they're illegal or not. I'm exaggerating, but, you know, you could do that. But it's all that's going to keep the little Joe average going. And it's all corporate now. It's getting... You know, world outlaws and uh, and, uh, and uh, world, Lucas. Yeah, Lucas. All those guys. I mean, it's it's big when they come to town. The people, the people come to see them race. In your opinion, though, in your opinion, uh, CJ is 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 world of outlaws and Lucas. Is it a good? I don't know. Is it a good thing for the sport? For the and here's why I ask: Is it a good thing for Joe local? To want to no. be like those guys and no. spend the it's money great, like them? Oh, it's a great, great deal. It's it a is. great deal. But it is not for the little guy. And, you know, this is what's bad. They won't let this little motor run with them. They've made every excuse. Well, you can't run that motor. It's got coil packs on it. Well, hell, the car you drove to work probably got coil packs <laughs> on it. Well, you uh, And you... they was telling... 
And Richie Little. Me, I'm sorry. They was, they was telling me about Victor Motors, and uh, he said, "What's well, got coil packs on it?" And I said, "Well, we'll come back and take the coil packs off. It just costs money, and it's not going to run any worse." And uh, and then I talked. And he said, well, I said, what's the advantage of coal? He said, well, they far a little hotter, don't they? And I said, do you know what MSD stands for? Multiple Discharge Spark. Well, and and it's because the rich guy, and they they got silver tongues. They can talk to those people. <laughs> well, Richie but, Lewis uh, is, talking about, is talking about trying to get the Lucas cars closer together and, and racier. I mean, isn't the 525, like, staring them right in the face is the answer? Well, they don't need the 525. They've got a good following. They get uh, a lot of money, and they don't want anything else in their way. But the reason, now, I'm a chassis builder. I'm an engine builder. been an engine builder, but lower than half have been a chassis builder. But I know that the suppliers and stuff like that, you know, they butter me up to get them to do that and stay away from this 525. And, I mean, it's hurt me. You know, it's hurt me financially and everything, but i tell you what, it's made my heart feel better because I feel like I've done something. But I just, I I, the, I, I just think if something's not, if something doesn't curb the spending, that, that, that and, and you, you know as well as I do, CJ, well, there you to be uh, let's, got, uh, Look, it's like putting a pork chop in front of the dog and tying the dog to the wagon. <laughs> uh, but, oh, yeah. but, uh, but CJ, do you remember the day? Believe it or not, when I first started racing, this old guy told me, and uh, he said, you know, they it used to be real good, and they ruined it. They started paying money. Now, uh, do you... See, do you remember the days, in, in, and I'm from Central Indiana, you're from Central Indiana, but do you remember the, I'm, I don't remember the days, I'm not old enough to, but you remember the days probably where a guy could build an Indy car in his barn and show up at Indianapolis Motor Speedway and try to get in the race. Well, it should be that way now. Okay, now, here's what I'm, here's my point, is I think Lucas and World Outlaws have separated themselves from the rest of everybody else. and, and in order to save, have to. Yeah, and, and in order to save weekly racing... In order to have weekly racing, we've got to convince the Joe locals, who 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 are every bit of uh, as, as uh, passionate about the sport as the big guys are. But we got to convince them that the way to go is is cheaper. Well, I have done that, but all I got was black marks. All I got was black marks, and it. I mean, everybody went against me. Even General Motors, they must have called General Motors. And threatened to quit buying Chevrolets, and because them people was behind us here 100 percent. And uh, Ford had built a motor for the Nazra, and uh, just great people. But uh, now they're not, for some reason, you know. And I know it's political, but the economy. Another thing too, there's engine builders that's got to make money, and. and uh, there's people with uh, that make that manufacture part. They got to make money. It's a big industry. Racing's a big industry. But oh, if yeah. we shut that part down, you know, it's going to hurt the economy. So the poor Joe average is, you know, they just he, the poor guy's just out to lunch. IndyCar today. Now I don't know much about it, but Johnny Parsons told me. And we sold them guys a CT525. With the way this motor runs and the power it puts out, they could put them in an Indy car and run just as fast as they're running right now. I told Bill Martins from Chevrolet, when they put the restrictor plates on these motors, they, in run Daytona and Talladega, they don't have as much power as the CT525. What if they let the CT525 run the Indy? What if they let them run this down there? Then Joe Average could go racing. Right, and, they, and, and see, here's the thing where I, I people beat me up, CJ, is 
is the provisional part. They get it to the point where, because, you know, back back the 50s, 60s, 70s, right up into the 80s, my grandfather, we we all would take cars and we'd go try to qualify for Daytona. We did it out of a little garage in Hamilton, Ohio. Um, and then over the years, who's your grandpa? Point, H.D. Lawson. Yeah. I know there was a Rufus Gray that run Indy cars, owned Indy cars. But I come from a, a long line of a something, but you know we've <laughs> I've been in I've been I've been in this thing for as long as I can remember. I mean, I remember back when I was you know nine ten years old, and and some of the people that walked in and out of that little garage there in Hamilton, you wouldn't believe it. But um, it's just it seems that over the years, just like you said, everybody they they it's like they want to keep their group together, and then they question when they run out of talent what they have to change in order to make it interesting again. And what I think is that the only thing you, that you have to change is to not change anything and let whoever well, wants to come and run, run. That's what we're trying to do on our car right now is you go race and unload, and you got one bar that you'll slide up and down from start to finish. And if we can do that, everybody's got talent then. But you're uh, thinking about the four-bar stuff and all that, and a race car, go back and think real deep in it, what it really does and what it don't do. Put you some welding rods together on your kitchen table and just look at what everything does. And uh, But think real deep. Think real deep because there's very, very few people that does think real deep. Joe does what Joe does. Oh, no. it's... It's definitely, it, it's not rocket science to the point that some of these guys make it out to be. I think a, a lot no, of it is just... Hell, no, it ain't near as complicated. It's you not got near as four tires the on the ground, and the goal is to yeah. keep those four tires on the ground. And the better I can keep those four tires on the ground and grab as much of that ground as I can get them to grab, the faster I'm going to be able to go. Yeah. Well, to go back, you're Joe Average Racer, and you're not a Scott Blumquist or some of those guys. If you're if you're not that guy, go back and think all the way back to the basics. To the basics. Pick up a rock and hold it up four feet off of the ground and let go of it. And then go back to the basics, because there's not anybody out there that runs off of the basics of the race car. Nobody does. And I can tell you that right now, and I might be stepping on somebody's toe, but, you know, they don't do it. They're doing, uh, they doing the same damn mistakes that I made when I built a four-bar car. But they See, have refined and refined and refined. Bird cages cost seven or eight hundred thousand dollars <laughs> They got the same mistakes in them that I made in 1984. CJ, they this is sound, right uh, Hey, this this sounds very familiar to my first visit to the Rayburn Ranch, and I sat in your living room, and you looked through every page of the catalog that I presented you, and said, <laughs> said the same stuff. Yeah. Well, you know, uh, I want to give a man. I, I mean, modifies. We build a good modified, but my heart's not any because a customer does not get his money's worth out of it. And and all the 104 cars we build today in the last three years, all of them are four-bar cars because that's what they want. And they're just not a good car. And nobody else's four-bar is a good car. But they got people that can work on them, people that can drive them, people that can spend money on them. And that's where racing's at. If I take Joe Average and he can penetrate those guys, he's going to have to have a lot better car. Would you agree with that? He's got to have a better yeah. car. Well, And another thing that I always say, race cars are simple. People are complicated. Wow. Race cars. But I, love, I love everybody. My God, I, what, I mean, the biggest family I got is a dirt track. 
and uh, you know the people I've been acquainted with and everything, and and, uh, and you know what? Someday I'm going to show them all. Uh, CJ, you had recently you had a a, uh, a lady um, come through the shop there, and Miss Kathy Jarvis. Oh yeah. Tell us now, a little bit about how that relationship formed. Now, and, uh, go ahead. She's got a hell of a constitution when it comes to racing. <laughs> but here again, she goes racing. She does not know. And she goes and listens to this guy and that guy, and then she just stays screwed up all the time. Now, she got up there with Rusty Slink, and Rusty pretty much had her under control. And she run like Rusty did and done real good in the, Oh yeah, I'm very proud of her. She's just. Uh, uh, I, I wish most people wanted to race as as hard as she did. And she, and she's been a, she was a guest on our show, and she literally got into a car last year, fell in love with it, and I think she's more about the challenge, um, yeah. more so, and a uh, very impressive lady. Oh yeah, great. Yeah, you know, uh, and if she stays after it like she's doing right now, and uh, it, and then Rusty got her. I mean, she's on four bar stuff. So, so what everybody else says. But if she can stay there and keep doing this, and and I mean, she run that hell to her up out there, and uh, my God, she come through here and we work on her car and, and and not have time to do everything that needed to be done. But uh, uh, they're great people. Her and her husband, and uh, he's not a racer, but my God, he's they he works his hand in off too. But they come here, and uh, it's like a uh, highway house here. They do their laundry. They stay all night. They get showers and uh, and go on to the next racetrack. Well, well, moving forward with the uh, with Rayburn, you, uh, the chassis, and, and you guys have started uh, working with shocks this year. Yeah, uh, I see a big need for shocks, and something we have found out is now if I could buy shocks from the manufacturer and get them, you know, in a hurry. Now Bill Stein is great, got a good product, but it takes eight weeks to get your shocks you know you can't do that well I can't buy enough shocks to last for a year so now we got to take them and buy the parts and build them ourselves and believe me it ain't an easy job Uh, we're probably even though Olin's is a little pricey but we're going to you know start selling some of them uh, and uh, and uh, we have sold some. We know what the things need pretty close, and uh, we've been using advanced suspension up there some, and trying to do it ourselves. And um, I, I think he's how many shocks you built today? Four. Built four shocks all day long. Is that my buddy Greg you're talking to? Yeah, and. Uh, and, you know, you can't pay the overhead, you know. You can't pay, you can't, you, you can't do it. But if I can buy shocks, I can sell them, and I'll make a little profit on it. I can put the shock that I want on the customer's car, and every time we've done this, it's, it's just been great. You know, we come out, I don't know, several years ago with the linear valve and shock. Everybody else had digressive. And a linear is more of a progressive shock, and we should call it progressive or digressive, but we come up with a shock. Well, you can run it softer on the nose, and we've done it with Coney. And, but Coney don't make this lefter shock. And the lefter shock that we got to use today is just, it's just an absolutely no-no for a dame. And it's truly a shock. The other three on the car are shock absorbers. 
and we have people that's got them old conies that we sold them years and years ago, the pants off of them, but they're still good. And don't cost much money, but I can't get this left or shock from them. Well, they aren't. The, isn't Coney right down there in northern Kentucky? Yeah, they're over there. They're they got a store there now. They're from Holland, and they got. I mean, uh, they're good. They they don't have the quality that Bill Stein's got in them, but they're good enough for anybody racing. It's yeah, they're in, they're in Florence. Yeah, see, Webb, all them, all these shock people are right here close. Now, but we don't know. We don't know nothing shock about shocks. People. Listen, listen. You talk about shock people. <clears throat> you can talk about. You can say uh, maybe Penske. I don't know. We put some Penskes on the car the other day because all we had. Penske looks pretty good. I don't know whether they're shock people or not. Coney is shock people. Bill Stein is shock people. Uh, Olin's is shock people. Uh, who else is out there that shock people? Can you name a, a shock company? Monroe. Maybe I'm not familiar with them today. <laughs> uh, you got the other shock people. K-Y-P. As far as you're talking about, as far as people that are in in our form of racing, companies yeah. like Genesis and Integra. There's that new Super Shocks, too. Yeah, but a lot of them, I think, web are copies. Uh, I mean, yeah, I, I, listen, I'm, I'm a media guy. I'm not a shock guy, a motor guy, or a, 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 a widget guy. <laughs> it's just like I got parts for Olin Shock one time. They had GNK stamped on them. I looked at a set of these Bill Steins I got. I pulled the parts out. They got GNK on them. Yeah, same thing. They got the same parts. Yeah. Yeah, we'll be putting. Well, they, it's all interchangeable, but uh, oh, it's just like you, just like just, you said, CJ. They they take a look at this stuff and they make it more complicated than what it is. Cause it, it, a shock, oh, yeah. oh, a shock in God. itself. When you think about yeah. it, it's just a it's, it's a piston and it's got some holes in it. Yeah, and they take really, washers and they put washers on each side of it. Yeah, to block yeah. the holes off, web. And then they put some oil in there. And then maybe if you're lucky, they might put some gas in the top of it to squeeze yeah. the oil and push the rod well, a little bit. Yeah, we are. <laughs> uh, we are right now. The more I learn about shocks, the more complicated they are. Greg works his ass off on them all the time, but uh, the more we learn, as Larry Moore says, the more we learn, the more we learn that we need to learn more. So that's right. We always get too old, too soon old, and too late smart. But I'm <laughs> telling you, I learn something every day, and I, you know, I sit here and I'm on the phone all day, and and all night long I step all night trying to figure out something. And 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 you know, the four bar car, I probably know more about than anybody does. And that's why I don't run the four bar. Well, CJ, I think today, go ahead. I think today we could come back with leaf cars and have a pretty decent. Is that is that something that uh, is that something that uh, one might see in your we shop? We have uh, we have got a leaf car that we've run. We got two or three of them. And, I mean, we went through everything on them. And, of course, you know, I've been sitting on the floor with four-bar stuff and playing with stuff and doing this. And uh, the bottom bar on the four-bar, they're one, they're always going shorter and shorter with it. But the the four-bar was 20 and a half inches when we first built it. And I'm going through some stuff here. See, we don't want this. It progresses too much. The four bar does. So now we can we can put the we can put the bar up higher in the front and make it longer. And it does. It's 
got your then you got the same initial, but it doesn't progress as much as the four bar. So that's it just hell is anything. Whatever you want the car to do, if you can drive it, and you can't drive, you don't have confidence in it. Whatever, whatever you get, whatever you want this car to do, you can make it do it. Well, CJ, I, I uh, certainly bar, uh, the Leaf car. Uh, what we've done there is raised the front of it up and curled the front part of the springs up, and we're making it roll steer like a four bar and uh, but you know I don't think it'll ever be the car that the watch linkage car is or swing arm and uh, but I think for if a guy's got a four bar and he don't run consistent maybe this four bar or this leaf car will replace that and uh, and I'm I've been doing other stuff on this other car and I'm trying to get Gary Engel running better. Uh, they said he was pretty good over there, and, but you, but you go back to you go get you get people like Ed Dixon come back out of retirement after several years, come back, went right back to the same old swing arm that he had. He won one of them old cars. He got it, and hell, he's right there, right there on top of his game with him. But people people beat themselves, you know. Yeah, you can't let you can't let you uh, you can't outthink yourself on these things. I don't reckon. I've heard that a lot from people. No, you can't. You got to know where the basics is. If you're gonna work on a damn lawnmower, you got to know what makes it cut grass. And and you know you probably seen the show Sling Blade. There wasn't no gas in that lawnmower. <laughs> so. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> Probably not. Well, 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 Mr. Rayburn, uh, thank you very much for spending a, an hour with us this evening. Um, yeah, I, I, it was an honor to have you on. Um, we have, I've been getting messages from our listeners. They're just they were just they seem to really enjoy enjoy everything. Uh, if you can get Mr. Gray to come over here, I'd like to talk to him a whole lot. Now. I had a guy come down from Columbus, Ohio. You probably know him. Maybe it runs a modified. He came over and he was talking about road center and all this crazy stuff. This was on a Saturday. I chewed the guy's ass out about a half a day, but I finally got to him to make him understand. Ooh. Two or three days later, I got a letter in the mail. I got it. I put it in my scrapbook. Someday we're going to build, make a book. And, uh, this guy said, here's $20 for the ash chewing. It really taught me a whole lot. So bring Maybe him that's on. that's what I need. Bring him on. Open mind. Bring an open mind with you. And, uh, and, and open ears. Open ears. And, uh, you know, it's a bull. What do we say? Can we say bullshit operates sport? Sure. And, uh... <laughs> And that's what people want to listen to on race cars. I well, think I, that's what people like to feed each other too. Yeah, we don't oh, yeah. have uh, we don't have any cars out there running, and uh, you know we just don't have enough to you know to really experiment with. And God, we got to start back all over again, and we've had to do this several times throughout our career. Well, the good thing, CJ, about working with Gray is, is he comes with his own built-in radio show, so the 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 uh, we can get the um, results of of the experiment out very quickly. Yeah, so that's I, that's a, that's a plus. I, yeah. I've been passing the word along with, I, you know, through 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 the channels. Um, CJ, I've seen you a, a million times at the racetracks. Of course, that's an exaggeration, but I've seen you a bunch because I race around here, and, and you're everywhere. Um, and in hopes that I would get that uh, that invitation for me to come and speak with you. Yeah, you don't have to bring twenty dollars. <laughs> I just would like I would like to do it. I like to try to make people understand. 
And and I tell you, racing's a lot simpler than people make it. Well, I, I'm all about I'm all about any information that I can get. Because I, you know, that's just how yeah. that's how it works. The more you know, the the quicker well, you're going to get where you need hell, to be. I ain't too sure people don't know too much about it. <laughs> I'm really not. <laughs> Well, how about this, CJ? How about we, uh, me and Brian, come by in in December? We bring pizza and beer for when we're at the IMA show. But we'll come hang out at your house before we go to the IMA show. Well, y'all just come on and uh, just you know any time and uh, you know I, I like people. Well, I certainly appreciate you taking time out of your evening to talk with us. I mean, it was just, I mean, an hour went by with a, in a blink of an eye talking to you. And uh, you're certainly welcome here anytime um, on our show. Do you have something to announce? Tell Greg to get a hold of me, or if you you, you can get a hold of me. We well, certainly pre- you appreciate you. You like 15 seconds being an hour. You get the, Yeah. <laughs> Those 15 so seconds are yours. Yeah, uh, Brian, I'd, yeah, I'd be nice to... Hell, I probably know you, but I don't... M- names. Names. But, uh, uh, yeah, get on there. And, I mean, I read a lot of articles here. I, and, you know, uh, my God, Greg had picked up one here. And he was asking me something. I said, throw that crap away. They don't know what the hell they're talking about. What was that article about? Oh, yeah, just, my God, people will tell people anything. (laughs) 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 They've got to sell those $1,000 bird cages. Well, they got... uh, And $2,000 shocks. Yeah. Well, I tell you what, we've had a hundred and sixty dollar shocks for a year, and uh, it's uh, it's got the job done for years. But now, where we got to roll steer and keep the left rear up, you know, we got to come into a different shock there, and we're doing a little bit different stuff on the front around too. But we're working her butt off. We ain't dead yet, and uh, and I I work I thrash this every day and every night, and uh, we're gonna be back. Well, uh, you, you got you got this. You got me in, in your on your side. If you like, I said you need some airtime. You want to come? If you just want to bitch at the world, you just call me. We'll put you on the air. We'll we'll sit down. Oh, we'll, I, we'll have two, uh, we'll have two hours of it. Well, this, uh, you know, you can, uh, when you tell it like it is, you would sound radical. You would be a Rush Limbaugh. Yeah, you're right. Uh, But I ain't too sure the guy ain't right. And if I told everything the way it is, and I don't like to run people down, you know. Uh, People was, this couple was uh, looking at their competitor's shop. They stuffed animals. And uh, they looked at this parrot sitting in there they had stuffed. And one of them looked at it and said, well, the feathers is not right. Its legs look like little sticks. And they should have had us do that. We could do better work than that. About that time, the parrot flew away. So I don't like to run other people's stuff down. Well, that's right. I understand. I was just I was going on with you. But uh, but you know what? When you don't tell it like it is, you let people down. You Sometimes when you them. tell it like it is, they want to beat you up. Yeah, if you can't stand the... I read this not long ago, too. If you can't stand the truth, don't ask C.J. Rayburn. <laughs> I like yeah. that. <laughs> but I put my whole life in racing, and and I will continue to do it. And uh, and you know life's a challenge. I want Joe Average to outrun the big hood. I want to take that ten thousand seven hundred people 
and put them where they can run this other one. But you're not going to do it with Lucas, and you're not going to do it with World of Outlaw. they got too much corporate stuff helping them that fights against these cheaper motors. And I've tried every way in the world to build an economical motor for people, something I'm not ashamed to sell. And, and you know, I can't do it. I can beat I can beat everybody else's price, but that's still too much. My heart's not in it. We're well, looking I... at uh, we're looking at putting these LS heads into a regular small block Chevy. I so uh, I guess World Products has got this deal where it's all bolted up. The, you know, that, that LS head, it flows, man, about as good as anybody's ported head. Man, and, and it just lasts. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's the key. Yeah. Well, you're talking about that 525 now, Webb. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, Webb, Webb's promoting the, what? what is it now? Well, well it's like... That's oh, like we're, on the knee, we're on the Neesmith thing. He, 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 he keeps plugging it. Yeah. It, because it makes sense. That's that's the only reason. I mean, it wouldn't matter if I worked for for Mike Vaughn or if I didn't work for Mike Vaughn. I just feel like we're losing. Well, racing. I think uh, people, you know, Mike Vaughn is, you know, probably going to be like me after he's dead and gone. About twenty years, people appreciate, you know, the things that they've done and helped them with. Great deal is just good, and and him and uh, that other outfit over there both they've just took it and and took it to the next level, and I think they're still you know going with it. And I think Vaughn's going to run a five twenty five series next year. I haven't talked to him. Yeah, that's the the plan is to have a, a five two five strictly a five two five series. Uh, and all that can be run in it is the five two five, so no need for weight breaks. And uh I think that I think that we're gonna show show everybody that you can have super late models at an affordable price. And I you know, the the crates have about replaced late models. Well I think uh I think that when you uh if you can you can put that motor in a car, give them a weight break. And but that's against uh, open motors, though. Well, give them a weight break. Put them against the open motors. And because that is the people that, you know, I mean, super late models what the people want to see. That'll put people in stands more than the crowd. Well, that's his question, CJ. If we put a... a, a if we put a, a a zero on the side of a crate car, and we put a, a a twenty nightmare on the side of a crate car, and we put a twenty one Moyer on the side of a crate car. Would the would the would the fans really give a damn what kind if of motor? If you crate? put if you had those guys in the cars racing them, they would knock the suspense down getting to the grandstand. That's what yeah, yeah. It's a, same way about with modifieds. You know, if them guys come there, they'd sell tickets. Now, I think a crate is a good deal. But here again, you get no. When you go in and put this thing into a super late, you got uh, people, if you remember, you remember they, in Florida that year, you know, they had all kinds of money up, you know, fighting the crate stuff. If you remember that, uh, Pro Power headed it up, but so, uh, so it, it doesn't pay. It doesn't pay huge dividends to be a, 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 a an innovator or anything in the sport. No, it doesn't. <laughs> we can, uh, you have we to. Can bra- we can brag on it, and uh, but see, you know, back where it all come from. The, you know, that's been twenty, thirty. Two years, thirty-three years, 
Well, when I come out with this, nobody ever. I mean, hell, people now, they don't remember 33 years ago. I don't. I was five. Yeah. <laughs> well, CJ, we really are up against the uh, time here. Uh, fixing running out of my time here on the uh, uh, on the show. Tremendous, tremendous honor having you on. I, I think it's going to be one of our most listened to shows. As a matter of fact, I, we've been breaking we've been breaking our own record the last three weeks. I think this one should be the fourth week in a row we break our own record for listeners. So, uh, really appreciate you being you on. Know, and, uh, just let people know that you're there. I guess and. Uh, I mean, I'd, uh, I'd love to hear anybody's interview about racing, especially a Joe Average guy. Well, I, hell, I, I, I'm not even Joe. I'm I'm Joe below average guy. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, anytime you want me, you just call. Thank you very much, CJ. We, okay. uh, and then also, guys, you guys go check out CJ Rayburn. Find him on the internet. What's the, is there a website where they can find you? Uh, CJ Rayburn at cjrayburn dot com. That's there's a cjrayburn dot com. Yeah, I don't know what all it is. So well, CJ Rayburn uh, racecars dot com, and you can check out the race cars that they're building, the shock package that they they've just started here recently. Uh, they can email you. They can email Greg Wesley. I take it. Yeah. They, He'll get that email. will get him. All right. Well, all right. Well, CJ, thank you very much for joining us here on In the Dirt, and we will be in touch with you. Okay. Get your Brian over there. And let me finish up on him. I'll get yeah. him over there. Okay, Brian. I'm I'm gonna make it. I'm gonna make it a point, and I've okay. and you got to figure out some way for me to, to get behind one of these swing arm cars because, like well, I said, I I've think, never been uh, in one. Yeah. I'm gonna. I'll talk to Gary. I'll talk to him. And uh, talk to him, and uh, I'll do everything I can. That that'll be awesome. Okay. I I appreciate it, and I look forward Alrighty. to talking some more with you. Because, like I said, you know, anything that I can learn is just going to help me get better. Oh yeah. Well, you know, uh, probably most people, if they've been racing the last ten years, and and uh, they haven't been, you know, they've been in four bar stuff and four bar stuff they need to wipe their slate their slate clean and start over and then it don't take long to get to where you're at because there's better race cars it just but Larry Moore says who am I to say okay I'll get going here and uh, these guys are getting hungry and I think we're going to go eat (laughs) And uh, well, make Greg Wesley we'll, pay for it. Yeah. <laughs> tell him. I, tell him I said to. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Mister Rayburn. Okay. 